Welcome to lesson five of the A-level chemistry bridging work for Devizes School. Uh, this lesson is focusing on rearranging equations. Uh, remember the point of these lessons is to get everyone's math skills up to a base level before we start in September. As with the other videos, I'd like to stop at this moment and click on the link below or find the link in the description of the YouTube video. Have a go at the starter quiz. Just three quick questions on rearranging equations. Again, don't worry if you're not sure, just have a go and see how you do. Okay, so there's going to be three examples, uh, which actually are the ones that were um, in the starter quiz, so you can check what you did. Um, three examples of rearranging equations, or as it's phrased here, making um, a term the subject of a formula. Um, this is, um, or the, the one with the white, or the ones with the white background are um, one way of thinking about rearranged equations, um, possibly a shortcut way or a quick way of doing it once you've sort of figured out um, or understood the quick rules um, about manipulating the equations. And then the other three examples I'm going to show you with a black background are more like um, how your maths teacher would probably uh, teach this, or uh, I suppose the more conventional way of um, talking about rearranging um, equations or making things subjects of um, formulas. Again, it doesn't really matter, they both come to the same uh, end point, so um, just pick whichever one works best for you. All right, so for these examples here, so we want to make x the subject of the formula, so x is on the left. Um, typical convention is um, is to have the thing that you're um, sort of trying to make the subject of on the left hand side, um, but as long as it's something equals something else and the the term is on its own, um, it will um, still be correct. Um, so we need to get rid of uh, this plus y from the left hand side. So we're going to rewrite out the, um, the formula. And then we're going to move the y across uh, the equal sign. So the rule is if you move anything from one side to the other of an equal sign, it then changes its sign or to the opposite version of that sign. So what's the opposite of plus? Well, it's minus. So this becomes x equals y, uh, sorry, w minus y. Right. So for number two, we again want to make x the subject of the formula. So we've got yx plus 5 equals m with x on this side. So we're going to rewrite it out again. We want to um, get x on its own. So the first thing seems obvious to do, same as above. Let's move that plus 5 across the equal sign. And it goes from plus 5 to minus 5. But we've still got yx. And remember, there's an imaginary multiplication sign in there that we don't write for shorthand. Um, but it is there because that means y times x. So we've got yx equals m minus 5. So what we're going to do now, we're going to need to take y across the other side. Um, and let's imagine this multiplication line here. So that there's an imaginary line underneath all these numbers. All right, imaginary line. And when we take this, this uh, y, which is a multiply on this side, on this top line, across an equal sign, needs to go underneath that imaginary line and turn into a divide. So it was a multiply, y times x is now divided by y. So the final answer for this one, x equals m minus 5 divided by y. Third example, a bit more going on. Um, so again, uh, we're making uh, something over here, the subject, in this case it's y. So we've got 4y plus 5w over 3 equals g. Or we want to rearrange it just to get y. So again, we'll rewrite out the formula, and we're going to take the 3 across the equal sign. So we got, uh, it was underneath, under here, it was divide by, again, under this imaginary multiplication line, I suppose you can think about it, or this, this row, I mean, is the multiplication, that line, I suppose you could say, is the divide line. Um, but once we've taken it um, across the equal sign, it was divide underneath this imaginary line, and now it's going to jump up. And now it's multiply 3g, it's not 3 times g, so it's up on this line. So I've gone across the equal sign and changed its sign. So 
write it out again. Makes sense now. We're going to move the five W across the equal sign. Once it uh, once it goes across, it changes its sign. So it was plus five W. So now it needs to be minus five W. And one final time, we'll write it out. And now we've got four Y. And again, there's a multiply sign there. Again, imaginary sort of multiplication line here with this dotted line underneath. Um, if we Take the 4 across the other side, it now needs to drop below that imaginary line and become divided. It was a multiply over here, take it across the equal sign, it's now a divide and it's underneath. So 3g minus 5w divided by 4 is the final answer. Right, so as I said it is, these ones are the black uh, background as an example. Um, probably more conventional in how uh, this is taught in maths lessons. Um, and uh, a more conventional way of looking at it. But again, it doesn't really matter if that previous method works for you, use that. Just going to manipulate it by taking it over the sign. If this method works for you, which is slightly different, then go for that. So we got V equals F lambda, and we want to calculate wavelength, which is lambda in this equation. So we need to get lambda on its own. So what do we do? Well, we're going to divide both sides by F. So we want to get rid of this F on this side, so we need to divide both sides by F. So whatever you do on this side of the equal sign, you have to do on that side of the equal sign. So why does that work? Well, something divided by itself, so 2 divided by 2 equals 1. Well, it makes sense that F divided by F would also equal 1. So you write it out, and then those Fs cancel. And again, remember what the... Um, the way of uh, verbalizing this is you must divide both sides by f. Well, we've got that over there. So as we said, that is pretty much equal to 1. So we don't write that because 1 times lambda is going to be the same number, whatever lambda is. So we can get rid of that 1, and we're left with v over f equals lambda. I know it's on the right-hand side this time, but it um, doesn't matter. The equation is still the same. The only time you want to flip it round is if you get a negative there, but you can worry about that another time. Um, Okay, so slightly more difficult example, E equals mc theta. So we want to calculate um, specific heat capacity. So we need to rearrange this equation to get C on its own. So this time, how do we do that? We need to divide both sides by m and theta. All right, and again, similar to what we said in the last one, even if you divide those two together for the same value, because it's that times that divided by that times that, well, it's going to equal one. Um, so they cancel out, so you can write it out. Remember, whatever you do, the sort of way to verbalize, whatever you do on this side of the equal sign, you must do on that side of the equal sign. So we're dividing by m theta, or divide by m theta. So the m's cancel, theta's cancel, left with c. They're basically equal to one, both of them on both sides, or you could say m theta divided by m theta. Same thing, so then don't write the one, and you're left with e over m theta equals c. And final example, speed equals distance divided by time. We want to get, in this case, d on its own. Um, so what we're going to do this time, um, well, we're going to have to multiply both sides by t. So we want to get d on its own, we need to get rid of this t down there. Um, and again, you verbalize by saying whatever I do on this side of the equal sign, I do on that side. So I'm going to multiply by t, so it's going to be d times t and v times t. And so now I've got two t's on this side that can cancel out by dividing because t divided by t equals 1, which is there, which you don't need to write. Then d equals v over t. You see how it's just flipped there, it doesn't matter, they, they're equal, so whatever way you write it down, it's fine. Okay. Hopefully, um, out of the two different versions, you like one of those and you've got a way of understanding how to manipulate equations. And no matter how big an equation gets, you, you these work. You can do these for any uh, number of terms in an equation. Okay. All right, as with all the other ones, um, there's a worksheet task. Now, this one's slightly different um, to the others. The others were um, all um, AQA EQA um, sheets that came with um, versions of those PowerPoints that I edited. Um, but again, you can find it at this link, but this time it's not a worksheet itself, it's called Math Skills for Chemistry and it's a booklet. Um, now there's 
rearranging equations in the booklet, but there's a lot more in it and it won't hurt for you to uh, complete the whole thing. And in this case, you don't have to go back to find the answers. Um, they are in the booklet. So the reason, um, the reason I set this booklet itself was for the rearranging equations bit, but then as I was looking at it, I thought, well, it won't hurt for you to go through as the answer's already there and do some more practice ready for uh, year 12 anyway. So um, there's that too. All right, and as I've um, alluded to in all the other videos, um, this GCC to A-level transition um, booklet, which is LXL, but again, is really good, um, is in uh, at this link or in the description of the YouTube video. This is your um, summer task. So that's what I expect you to have done by the time you start. And then um, when you start in September, I want you to rag rate each section of the booklet. So um, you'll mark your work every time you complete a section. Um, and then you can rag rate it based on your percentage. So I would say obviously 50% you're around orange. If you got really low um, sort of percentage on something, um, sort of um, around the 10s, 20s, 30s, you may want to go red. And then if you're up in the 70s, 80s, 90s, then you might want to go green. Um, and then the idea of it, it gives me a good idea of any gaps in knowledge um, that I can focus on at the beginning of the course. So um, if people are struggling with a particular bit from that booklet, then that could be something to do as a, maybe an extra homework or um, an extra lesson just to get everyone up to speed. And if there's something in particular that everyone needs to work on, uh, then obviously that's really helpful. But I can also um, personalise that if one person finds one thing difficult or we can help each other out. Anyway, that is, um, well, that's all the videos for the bridging work. And there's your summer task. And I hope to see you all um, in my A-level chemistry lessons in the future. Thank you very much.